Do you want to listen to a podcast? By who? Georgia GOP Congressman Doug Collins. How, how is it? The greatest thing I have ever heard in my whole life. I could not believe my ears. In this house, wherever the rules are disregarded, chaos and mob rule. It has been said today, where is bravery? I'll tell you where bravery is found and courage is found. It's found in this minority who has lived through the last year of nothing but rules being broken, people being put down, questions not being answered, and this majority say, be damned with anything else. We're going to impeach and do whatever we want to do. Why? Because we won an election. I guarantee you, one day you'll be back in the minority and it ain't going to be that fun. Hey everybody, welcome back. It is Friday's Finest, and do we have a Friday's Finest for you? It is the second of the year, but we're having a double feature today. Yes, we are. Yes, Champ, Chip, James are both here. Chip has reappeared. Yes, the sightings were there. We talked about it last week. Since then, James, it is amazing. The Auburn-Alabama game is now over, but he has reappeared. We're here with him. Uh, glad to see <laughs> as we go. So in, after the break, we get to hear from Chip and James. Can't wait. We got all kinds of coaching news. We got all kinds of political news. Um, but also today at the uh, on the podcast, you can also get a, a, a second feature. We had a chance to sit down with Chan Gailey, uh, Coach Gailey, good friend of the show, always gives us insight. The first man actually to tell us Baker Mayfield was the one that he would take uh, coming out of Cleveland. Hey, we never knew Joe Flacco would come along. And now Baker Mayfield is leading Tampa back into the playoffs. So, hey, you, know, you got to give Chan Gailey credit there. But a lot of good things. Interestingly enough, uh, you'll notice, because we're going to talk about it here uh, on Friday's Finest, uh, the uh, announcement of several coaches who have either been fired or retired. The great uh, Nick Saban out of Alabama has retired. Um, interesting enough on what Chan had to say about that, because he didn't think he actually would. So good stuff coming up here on the program. Can't wait to dig into it. But first, got to say a couple of things about some political. I mean, we're going to Iowa caucuses on Monday. Right now, Trump has a commanding lead. Uh, on Monday, by the way, mark your calendar for podcast on Monday. Matt Whitaker is with us giving you a breakdown of how the Iowa caucus actually works. And there, and I learned some stuff. I thought there was uh, there's a mix between how Democrats do it and Republicans do it. And the way Republicans do it is basically, as you'll find out from Matt, just a simple, everybody come together at the same time. They do a straw poll and go home. It's, it's an interesting uh, way to look at it. So uh, that special episode on Monday with Matt explaining the Iowa caucuses, you don't want to miss that as we go forward. Um, I would talk about Congress, except the Republicans are ungovernable again. So surprise, we're not really uh, shocked that nothing's happening there. Uh, Speaker Johnson's in some trouble. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll talk more about it uh, in later episodes about possible shutdowns and everything else, but it's just not good uh, as we go forward. Um, and I'm going to ask Chip after the break. In fact, it's going to be our first question after the break. Chip coming up and James, and it's going to be about the dual screen last uh, week with the debate with the Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, and Donald Trump uh, on dueling networks at the same time. Interestingly enough, look to me like that's where uh, Trump wanted to be all along. So all of this here on Friday's Finest, right after the break. Hey, folks, you know, when you look out and you see the country and just the disarray it is, you see the Biden administration, you see the wholesale prices have just went through the roof again. Inflation is tearing us up. If you have your finances all impinged in just a, a few areas, if you're just in stocks and bonds and you're not diversified, I got some news for you. You need a navigator. You need somebody to help you get to where you need to go with those finances. And I can't think of anybody better to do that than my friends at Legacy Precious Metals. You need precious metals in that portfolio. You need gold and silver. And Legacy Precious Metals, the folks there, they're the navigators. They know how to deal with tough times. They know and how to look ahead and, and take your personal situation and make it something that uh, can be workable for you in the long term. Because that's at the end of the day, that's the one you're most uh, concerned about. You need to make sure that your personal finances and your retirement are secure. You need folks like like Legacy Precious Metals helping you in that. They are they will take the time to learn you. They'll learn your finance. They'll learn where your investment goals are, and they'll help you get there. And metals and gold right now in this kind of crazy inflation, in this kind of crazy economy with the Biden's uh, economy is just, uh, you need that help. And Legacy Precious Metals is the one to do that. So give Legacy Precious Metals a call, 866-528-1903, 866-528-1903. Or you can always visit them online 
online at LegacyPMInvestments.com and you can download their free investor's guide. Legacy Precious Metals, they're the ones you need. They're the navigators to help you to these turbulent times. Hey everybody, it's MyPillow's 20th year anniversary and over 80 million MyPillows have been sold. Mike Lindell and My- MyPillow wants to thank each of you and every one of you for giving you the lowest price in history on their MyPillows. You will receive a queen size my pillow for $19.98. Regular price is $69.98 and just $10 more for a king size. You will receive diff- deep discounts on all my pillow products such as bed sheets, mattress toppers, pet beds, mattresses, my slippers, and so much more. This is a time to try out something other than the amazing products that you've had your eye on. Go to mypillow.com, click on the radio podcast square, and use the promo Collins, C O L L I N S, to receive this amazing offer on the queen size my pillow for $19.98 or call 800 986 3994. This offer comes with a 10 year warranty and 60 day money back guarantee. It's time to start getting the quality sleep you deserve. You know how I know that? Because I sleep on a my pillow every night. Go to mypillow.com and use promo code Collins, C O L L I N S, or call 800 986 3994 today. All right, we're here. The gang is all back. James, we've got Chip back with all th- both of us now. It is amazing. Chip, welcome back, buddy. Great to be back. I, I missed being on, so thanks for having me. We're glad to have you. You and James took it on a little bit, but you know, while I was in, but now we're all back. Hey, Chip, before we get into our favorites here on, on Fridays, that's football and talking about life. Um, also, one thing I didn't mention in the intro is we got to talk about McAfee and what is this about Aaron Rodgers? I mean, my God, uh, it, this is amazing. But uh, we we hit this a little bit offline, though, Chip. The the split screen uh, the other night with uh, DeSantis and Haley in a food fight and Trump by himself on that Wednesday, uh, you know, that night with the Fox folks and just Donald Trump was on in, in that. I mean, I'm not going to say from a debate standpoint, Haley and DeSantis wasn't on, but you and I've been in this a long time. People would prefer not the sort of back and forth food fight to a more pointed message, whether they agree or not. But this base, you know, and I know they agree with Trump on a lot of stuff. Well, they do. And I tell you, he is in as good position as as good of a position as anybody has been in uh, going into an Iowa caucus uh, in the history of the Iowa caucuses. I think the largest margin of victory for any candidate in the Iowa caucuses was uh, Bob Dole. Uh, which I think was 13 points. And, you know, the last four polls to come out of Iowa, Trafalgar Group came out this week. He's up 34 points. Morning Consult came out right before that. He's up 43 points. I mean, the only question right now is, you know, does he break 50% and who comes in second? So, you know, what happened this week on the split screen, Doug, I think was, you know, it, it, Trump was on. And the reason he was on is because, you know, he knows he's about to win Iowa by a historic margin. And, uh, you know, it was interesting. The the Haley and DeSantis debate, I didn't think was going to be very interesting, but I couldn't turn it off. I mean, once (laughs) I started watching it, I couldn't turn it off. It was a slow motion train wreck. I mean, you know, you you had two candidates. You had two candidates who are both. Um, you know, fighting to be within the margin of error of each other for second place, who were both going to lose by 30, 35 points on Monday. And you could sense their frustration, their frustration with each other and their frustration with the person who is on another network. And so, you know, I, I, I really didn't think much of the debate going into it, the debate between DeSantis and, and Nikki Haley, but I, I found it, I found it where I couldn't turn the channel. It was just a, it was a train wreck. It, it definitely was. And then of course we had, there was an, and we'll get to the thing, but I have to get this in. Hey, uh, Christy drops out. Uh, weird for me personally, Chip, I and mean, you from a political professional background, I don't get it. I mean, if he was dropping out to endorse somebody else, I get it, but he, torched everybody else on his way out the door and you're four days from Iowa to a week and a half from New Hampshire. I don't get why he dropped out like he did. Well, I think a couple things. Uh, number one, I don't think he wanted to get embarrassed. Nobody likes to get embarrassed. That's no right. fun. Um, and then, you know, number two, I think uh, the governor of New Hampshire, Chris Sununu put a full court press 
on his steering committee, many of whom, if not all of whom, are supporters of the governor too, to kind of to kind of get him out. And you know, and at the end of the day, uh, you know, the the crazy dynamic. As I mean, if you're Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley, do you want his endorsement? Because then you have to. If you get it, you got to accept it and then you got to talk about it. And then, you you know, that's not where the party is right now. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, it's just not it's not where the party is. And so, you know, of course, you're you know, if you're Nikki Haley, you like Chris Christie getting out in New Hampshire, because I do think Nikki Haley is probably likely to benefit from that. But she's going to benefit from that probably just as much without his endorsement. So, you know, yeah. I, I think. uh I, I think he, I think he made the right decision because I I do think he was about to get embarrassed and you know really didn't campaign a lot in Iowa and you know his numbers in New Hampshire which were you know good three or four months ago were um, were were really dwindling very quickly. Yeah, I can see that. All right, uh, lots uh, still going on there, and we'll we'll have more on that in next week. But we have, I mean, could you have? Uh, James, Chip, can you? I've, I've, we've lived through Black Mondays before. Uh, I mean, after the season's over, firings, everything else. Right now, I think as we tape, it is eight coaching vacancies right now in the NFL. Um, but yet, look from the NFL perspective, yeah, Belichick gone, yeah, Pete Carroll gone. Um, I mean, icons of the coaching legacy in the NFL. And then, of course, you've got. The, you know, again, like Alabama, don't like Alabama, the GOAT, Nick Saban, um, retiring yesterday, actually, I think, surprised a lot, a lot of people. Yeah. Um, hello, everybody, by the way. I didn't say hello yet. Um, morning, James. Good morning. By the way, <laughs> did you guys really expect a fat Italian person from New Jersey to go out quietly? I mean, Chris Christie wasn't going to go out down without a play. Um, from New Jersey? Come on, guys. Um, that's why you have James for political content on this show, folks. Right there. On the you show pay for extra what, for James. What baby. are your thoughts on the political climate? Chris Christie's a fat Italian guy. From <laughs> um, uh, there's a, it's really funny. Um, I, when Mike Vrabel got fired, my first thought was, oh, he's going to go to the Patriots as a coordinator, hang under Bill Belichick for a year, and then they'll just give him the job, Right. And now that, to me, that's not even a debate. He's going – I have no question Mike Vrabel is going to be the coach of the Patriots now that Bill Belichick's dropped out. Um, he's If he goes anywhere, I hope he goes to the Chargers um, because that franchise deserves a little bit of love. They've been down in the dumps, and they have too good of a quarterback. Uh, Nick Saban leaving Alabama leaves the most important head coaching vacancy in football right now. It's not even up for debate. That's the biggest, most important job. And I know there was word about Dabo Sweeney going there, but that would just be – I can't stand Dabo, so that would stink. Um, and Pete Carroll, I don't really care because he's going to go somewhere else and chew gum upstairs where everyone can watch him in a booth. Uh, Chip, what do you think? Look, I mean, the you know, the, the Bill Belichick moving on really wasn't a huge surprise. Pete Carroll, in hindsight, shouldn't have been a huge surprise. Nick Saban was a surprise. But really, I mean, we're, we're in a moment in history. Um, you know, e even though even though the Belichick announcement wasn't a surprise, you know, until it happens, it, it doesn't happen. And literally, within 18 hours, we've lost Bill Belichick, Pete Carroll, and Nick Saban. And, you know, and, you know, three guys who have been in this game for, you know, decades and decades and had a tremendous amount of success. And so uh, yeah, it's a it's a, you know, pretty moving, pretty moving time. I would agree with James assessment about the Alabama job, although I, you know, I I think whoever takes that job um, is w walking into an impossible situation, you know, uh, replacing a legend especially in college football, maybe less so in the NFL, but still the dynamics exist. But replacing a legend in college football, you don't want to be the guy to replace the legend. You want to be the guy that replaces the guy after he gets fired that replaced the legend. Because, you know, the expectations at Alabama right now are uh, they've been out of whack for a long time. 
And, you know, Alabama expects to win 10, 11, 12 games every year and play for a national title. I, I think those days are over. I think they're about to be in the rearview mirror. The portal open for all the Alabama player. 30 day window just opened with Bell- with uh, Saban's announcement. And, uh, you know, I don't know that a new person can keep all of those players. George is about to. Cycle. It works. And George so. has got a knife and fork out just waiting to pick the carcass. You oh, know, okay. I have a question, though. Um, there was a couple, it was probably bef- the week before the championship game on the McAfee show, and we talk about that show too much, but um, uh, Saban was on there, and he was kind of complaining about the fact that he's got to do all this recruiting stuff while he's in the playoffs. And I honestly, now looking at that, I'm thinking he was probably, like, concerned that he had to do both, knowing he was going to retire, win or lose. And... He basically recruited all these guys and had to lie to them and be like, I'm going to be here. Unless he didn't, but he couldn't do that because they would all know and they that would get out. But I, I have a feeling he was probably like, I have to lie to all these players to tell them to come to Alabama and in a couple weeks I'm going to retire. Yeah. Because now Alabama is going to lose at least a third of the guys. There's no, there's no way they don't. It's possible. But I mean, look, I mean, it depends on how quickly they move for a coach. I mean, that's going to be the, one of the keys. I mean, if you bring in a Dan Lanning – you bring in uh, somebody like that that may could still have that sort of pizzazz. They may stay. But here's an interesting tip. Chip, you just mentioned this. It also, to me, and maybe I'm ascribing too much to something, but I, but, but I think we all agree that he's one of the greatest college football coaches. I mean, two of the greatest college football coaches ever came out of Alabama, Bear Bryant and, and Nick Saban. But the, the issue here, he announced his retirement after the portal had closed which opened up an ex- this, a exclusive portal for his th- his kids for 30 days. Yeah, I, I mean, I, look. It, I it's, came to it, that unplanned. It, it, it's the construct of what, what college football is under now. And, and, and look, I, I'm sure Nick Saban knew that too. I mean, James is, is right and you're right, Doug, but it's the construct of which we're at. I mean, you can't announce your retirement before the season's over. You don't want to announce your retirement – you know, in mid late February, when you got, I mean, it, it does suck. I mean, it, you know, people are saying, oh, well, why are you, the Bulls are so bad. You got six and six teams and you got people transferring. You know, why don't you open the portal, you know, after the new year? Well, hello. It's these, these kids have to go to school and <laughs> the semester starts in January. And so the reason the portal's open in December is it's the end of the school year. And so if kids are going to transfer immediately, they need to get enrolled in their new school for the new semester. You really can't transfer mid-semester. So, you know, it's 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 tough. And there was never going to be an easy time or a right time if you're Nick Saban to retire. I mean, when when is a right time for a guy like well, Nick I Saban think, to retire? Well, my thought was is I think he actually did this. It actually helped those that he recruited. I think it helped those that don't understand because now they're the only ones that could be newly into the portal. They're going to get all the attention. Sure. And, that's so, right. and yes. all the coaches will see them. Right. So like the one who decommitted yesterday, that big tight end, I don't know, it was a wide receiver. Who Ryan, decommitted. Ryan Williams. Yeah. Williams. Yeah. I mean, he's back on the market, can still go anywhere, could conceivably still register in a school early if he needed to. I, I just think it was probably if as much as it, as hard as it is with what you just described, Chip, Probably one of the classier moves I've seen from Nick Saban for oh, yeah. his players. Yeah. As we go. Hey, um, speaking of which, though, I mean, that opens it up. I mean, I, I brought up a name, Dan Lanning. Uh, James brought up Dabo Sweeney. Who else is out there on this one? Well, I think you're you're going to see you're going to see Nick, uh, Lane Kiffin's name in in I the. Was uh, just going to say if Lane yeah, Kiffin in, gets in the job, thing as well. because swear. Lane Kiffin's a good coach, and I think Alabama has bigger bags. You know, bigger money bags than Old Miss does. I mean, uh, you know, but but I, I just don't think I, I don't think they're going to get a Dan Lanning or a Lane Kiffin or a Davo Sweeney. I, you know, I I think you know I don't know that Alabama wants Davo Sweeney. I think they would want Lane Kiffin and Dan Lanning, but you know, I mean, they they you know they're not idiots too on what's happened in history. I mean, what they would be looking at doing. In order to come in, I mean, what what is? Let, let me ask you this. I mean, what is a what is success succeeding? Nick Saban, answer that. I mean, what is success? What are you going to judge success by as the next football coach at Alabama? You have three years to win a championship. 
Yeah, and Nick Saban didn't win a championship in the last three years. That's so. what I'm saying. That's your only yeah. option. You have three years. You have a three year yeah. window before they fire you because you know, he think won you look at this. six there or five. Yeah. I think you look at this sort of like it was after Bear, you know, left. And, you know, it, they they struggled for what the one that came in. Was it – who was it came in right after that? Was it Shula or who was it came in right after Bear? Roy, Roy Perkins maybe? Yeah, Perkins, yeah. Anyway, but then they had – they struggled, and then it was finally when um, – oh, fiddle. Gene Stallings? Stallings. Gene Stallings brought it back. And then when Stallings left again, they had the drop down. And then Saban, of course, comes back in and for the last, you know, 16 years, 17 years has been, you know, off the chart. Georgia had the same thing. Uh, Dooley retired. Ray Goff was loved by most, had no chance. I mean, he, he played for a few years, then they, and then they went through another one, and then they got Rick. And Rick, I think one of the reasons that uh, Kirby has done so well is Rick was good, but Kirby has proved to be better. And there was a few years toward the end, people had lost faith in, in Rick being more than where we were. And so I think that's a transition. They don't have that at Alabama. The Alabama transition is, why aren't you winning a national title? Yeah, it's a, it's a I mean, you talked about being in an impossible position. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough to go in there. But you're talking about the recruit, recruit – it's about the recruiting classes, right? This is why – and I'm not saying any – I don't want to compare college to – to pro football because college basketball, again, is so much about the coaches. But Krzyzewski, when he retired, he retired at the beginning of the season, right, and then said, this is my last year, right? That recruiting class after that wasn't as good. Let's just be honest, right? That's what you're talking about with Alabama now is like this recruiting – the, the recruiting, recruiting class next year and the year after have to be convinced that it's about Alabama's – pedigree and them getting you into the NFL over you're not going to play for Nick Saban. Like that's a tough thing to sell right now. It's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, I would argue it's an impossible thing to sell and have success with. I mean, I guess we'll find out, you know, I mean, whoever the successor is, but there, there's no one, is there someone under him right now that people have set? Cause I, obviously he's had a ton of people like Kirby and other guys that moved on and, is there someone under him right now that has a chance to be a good coach, or is there not? I haven't even heard anything about his assistants. No, I, I think their defensive coordinator just retired a week ago, uh, and he he wasn't going to fit. He wasn't going to uh, uh, check the box for the Alabama brass. I mean, you know, the the Alabama donors are going to be putting a lot of pressure on a big name coach to come in here, and I just I just don't know that, that, that they succeed at, at getting one. You know, I, yeah. It, <laughs> this is the this is the weakest and and weak is a very loose term here. This is the less star powered assistant coaching staff that Saban's ever had. I think that's um, fair. Yeah, it's just I mean, because you go back over the last seventeen years, you've had Sarkeesian, you've had Kiffin, you've had Kirby, you've had uh, you know, you just you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, their offensive Sammy. coordinator this year was Tommy Reese. Yeah, I mean he's not going to get the job. No, not a you chance. Know, well, um, he can be the sacrificial lamb. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Look, I here's what I'm looking for more than anything. There will come a time in the near future, and it probably won't be this week. Whenever he does his announcement and his press conference and things like that, but in the near future, I say probably within the next three months, you know, Nick Saban will sit down uh, under his own terms and give an interview to somebody at his own terms, and and I think. Um, you know, I, I look forward to his candid comments on where he thinks the state of college football is. Today. Oh, it's going to be good. And, yeah, yeah. And, and and what role that played and the changes that college football has undergone, you know, both with the NIL, both with the transfer portal, both with conference realignment. I mean, you throw all that in there. I mean, that that's a lot of change to this product in the last five years. And look, I, I know – and Nick Saban's 72 years old as well. There were only two coaches in, in Division One football who were older than him. So let's, let's also not pretend that age didn't play a role in this too. But, you know, uh, he now has his handcuffs off, and, and he can now be as candid as he's ever been. And I, I really look forward to that, to well, hearing I mean, what he has to do say. Do you guys want a quick ESPN's yeah. top seven to replace real quick? Um, uh, they had Dave, uh, Dabo at number one. Dan Landing at number two, but he just re-signed with with Oregon, right? So I Alabama's think got the money to buy that out. 
I'm just saying he just resigned, like yeah, yesterday or today. Uh, Kalen DeBoer, Mike Norville, uh, Lane Kiffin, Steve Sarkeesian, and James Franklin. James Franklin's kind of interesting. Uh, no. Because, no, no, no listen, no, hear me out. I'm no, not saying you no, want him. No. I'm just saying that they're, they're, that, that to me, like that's Penn State. I don't know how to put it. Penn State is one of those that they play. They always play a pretty good schedule, and he's – they do. I'm not – but what I'm saying is they always end up in the top 15, and he's – you're talking about getting Alabama's recruiting class. If if you can convince them James Franklin can be the next guy, I'm not saying you want him. I'm just saying I feel like that's the most interesting one because all the other guys are like well, under essentially of – yeah, I mean, I I think it's very interesting, but all all of those coaches that you just mentioned are are successful coaches right now at at good programs, and they're making a lot of money. And so, a lot of money. Dabo's. Uh, I just really don't want to. Think Dabo, you want to leave? You're right. You haven't won the big game yet. Um, you tend to lose big games, but you're not on the cusp of losing your job. True, you know, true. And, yeah, no, he's not going to lose that. No, no. no. Penn State's so, never going to let him go. Even if, even if Alabama, you know, is to go down the the ladder, per se, you know, the fifth or sixth rung on the ladder and decide they want to pursue a James Franklin, is that really something that he would want to do, too? That That's why I just think – I don't know. I mean, look, I and this could go – so many different directions, you know, and and so um, you know we'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, James Franklin needs to stay at a place that won't fire him for losing every one of his big games every year and still win ten games. I mean, listen. don't be grumpy about this, all right? Bill Belichick's coming to Alabama. That's what's going to happen. This That'll has all work. been planned out. Soon as Arthur you heard Smith, have- send Arthur Smith yeah. to Alabama. Uh, do I have a uh, no? Uh, y'all, y'all saw I sent y'all out that yesterday the the Annie Agar stuff on. Oh, oh buddy. Uh, so good! That was that <laughs> was incredible. I, I mean, we we need to be a sponsor for Annie Agar on this show because I mean she is amazing. But um, well, you know what? Can we just take a moment of silence uh, for Cordero Patterson's career now that uh, yeah. Arthur Smith's gone? <laughs> Johnny <laughs> Smith's career too. Tyler <laughs> Algier's career. Yeah, yeah, Algier. You know what's funny is Tyler Algier is one of those guys that, like, last year played perfectly fine. He was absolutely suitable for that role. And he was fine this year. Let's be honest. Like, the amount of touches didn't work out for either of them. But I just think it's very funny, like, Alabama is so interesting. They're like, let's just get all these super weapons, uh, and we're going to use every single one of them at the most inopportune time. Uh, that's going to be that's the Arthur Smith motto. And now he's gone, and now they just have everything they need. They just need someone who's willing to like, I, I who's just willing to be like Algier. You are the backup running back. I cannot stress this enough. <laughs> Yeah, I got. I got to bring up something here that you're going to hear, folks, on the uh, uh, double portion of today's Friday's finest with Coach Chan Gailey. Just as a, as a, a little hint here, um, I asked the question, James, if you remember of Coach that you know did they? I think that uh, instead of a new, you know, whiz or whatever coming in, could could they benefit from a uh, you know an older, you know, more seasoned coach, a Belichick or something like that? And uh, and Chan actually agreed with us, Chip, uh, that 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 might be what the Falcons need. He talked about Dan. Uh, the coaching, uh, the Lions brought in that toughness mentality because that's what Atlanta seems to lack. They lack that stopping ability, that, that toughness on both sides of the ball. And it's just like, we're going to make everybody happy, everybody feel good with the ATL, whatever, but they never, they're play. The other thing is, Blank has a literal blank check. I mean, and he shows a propensity to the high name. So I'm wondering who he's actually going to go after. Well, look at the teams that, uh, that turned it around a little bit this year. You said Dan Campbell brings toughness. Um, the Texans got uh, what's his name? I'm blanking out on his Ryan. name. Nico Ryan. Nico Ryan's tough dude. Look at the Raiders turn around. They didn't play excellent at the end of the season, Pierce but compared good. to what they were doing, the fact that Antonio Pierce isn't signed already. If I'm Atlanta, I'm calling. I know that you said a veteran coach, but I'm just talking about guys who bring yeah, like I a certain mentality. I, I get it. I get it. Right. I, I, if you're the Raiders, you should sign him. But I'm just saying, like, that's oh. exactly what Atlanta needs because right. they just have a bunch of flash guys that can ball out. Every one of those dudes is super talented. It just needs to be brought in, kind of squared around the edges. You know what I'm saying? We need the grits blitz back there, Chip. 
Yeah, and, uh, you know, what I don't know with the Falcons, too, is here's what I don't know. I know B. John Robinson's going to be a longtime good performer in the NFL. I know that Drake London will. I think Kyle Pitts might be a bust. I mean, I just At do. this point, his, yeah. his psyche is ruined. But but I could be wrong. It could just be he's he's been in the wrong system. The pieces hadn't come together. At the beginning of the season, I was thinking that. Now I'm really beginning to – feel like he's just kind of a bust hope I'm wrong you know I, I would love to see his career resurrected but I, I've not been impressed with anything I've seen from Kyle Pitts in three years you know and so you know is that all attributed to Arthur Smith I don't doubt it you know but we need a quarterback in here we need a coach that could put it together because we're not that far away I mean we're not from a personnel perspective where some of the other teams are I mean, we're, we got we got skill players. We got people that can make plays. You know, we got we got good players on defense. It's just not, uh, it, you know, it, it just uh, for whatever reason, it, like you said. I mean, it's just not been put together, and and maybe that is something like a Belichick could do. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it'll be interesting to see. You know, Blank is is. I mean, he's got the ability. The financial ability is not a problem. I mean, as far as bringing somebody in, we know in the past he's wanted to go after. Uh, Parcells and Gibbs and everybody else. I mean, so he's willing to go after the big names. So we'll see what happens there. James, I got to agree with you about Pierce in, in uh, Las Vegas. Um, it's interesting, though. They've allowed him uh, – teams have asked to uh, talk to them about their head coaching job, and the Ra- uh, Raiders haven't sort of objected yet. So that's an interesting – I just don't get it. Mark- what, what, are you, what are they waiting for? What are the Raiders waiting for? Mark this is what Davis I do- wants John Madden. Mark Davis wants John Madden. I just don't get it. It ain't fair. John John Gruden. No, no, he wants John Madden. He wants to go back. I got you. I got you. Well, you just, he literally wants. He wants yeah, to go. Ask him going after Gruden again. I I just, no, 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 no. Gruden's out. That ain't gonna happen uh, as we go into this thing. But I mean, it's just an interesting, you know, a, a perspective here. Um, but I also think. And let, while we're discussing this, I, and I know you, uh, let's let's take a break from coaches for a second because this is too it, to me. It's just intriguing, and this is Friday's finest. And I, I think the, we need to take these quirkly in the roads. And, and James, you said about McAfee a minute ago. I agree with you, but this is fascinating to me. All right, McAfee goes after his boss, I guess, at ESPN, the big boss over the boss that McAfee trashed was with him at the Indianapolis game over the weekend. He continues trashing the ESPN boss again on the college football uh, pregame show when when his crew was there on Monday. He then has Aaron Rodgers on to give a retort back to Jimmy Kimmel on the whole Epstein and vaccines and everything else deal. The next day, McAfee says, okay, the Aaron Rodgers part of the season is over. He won't be back. I'm glad this is not going to happen. And I'm, I'm not going to be mentioned, which I thought was pretty interesting. And then yesterday on Thursday, Belichick retires, and they bump the McAfee show off of 12 o'clock on ESPN. Something's going on at this at this level. We'll see on Friday, you know, today what happens. But, but – <laughs> The, this may be the I mean, we may see YouTube reappear in McAfee's future. It's the it's the political it's the sports equivalent to what happens in politics all the time in Game of Thrones. I mean, the Pat McAfee show and the ESPN completely Game of Thrones. Um, yeah, it's, it's, no, like, it's uh, wow. And I mean, announced the Aaron Rodgers thing was over for the season. The season's over anyway. We've got playoff games starting. To- yeah, so, well, that's what way was. James, you're in this industry. You you know the stuff that you know Arbitron rate, all this that kind of you know viewership ratings. I mean, Chip and I are just you know we're politicos and stuff. But I mean, you get this from that insider. I have, and, and if you've noticed, those conflict. I hear conflicting statements. A lot of folks say that you know that the McAfee show has actually helped ESPN. They've they've actually increased you know viewership during that hour. Uh, I can't believe that people watch Get Up and whatever first take. I mean, that's the most boring shows I've ever seen in my life. But uh, but where is this in reality? I mean, is ESPN really in a, a an in- institutional decision here? They paid him a lot of money, um, but they seem to be making a lot of money on this as well. What from the business background? What do you take from this? I mean, I don't want to. How do I put this? 
How many McAfee clips are there on the internet that aren't related to ESPN or the McAfee show? Like his stuff goes viral anyway. Aaron Rodgers went viral. Coach Saban goes viral. Um, I mean, even that video, this was like three years ago, feels like maybe even more where that little kid came on and said, screw Boston. And like yeah. everybody was happy. <laughs> right. Yeah. The point is that they are a viral show regardless. They don't need e – here's the thing. I don't think they need ESPN. ESPN needed them. Can we be real about that? ESPN has bad programming. I grew up uh, – when I was a kid, I woke up to SportsCenter. I came home to SportsCenter. I cared about it. That show is – I hate saying it. That show is absolute trash. It's not the same as when I was a kid, and the shows they put on around it aren't very good. Um. I think they've lost a lot of luster. Plus, you, you're in a generation now, and I, I know we can talk about this company all we want, but Barstool is the standard, guys. Barstool is the standard. Every one of their clips goes viral. There's nothing on ESPN that goes viral outside of a couple comments here and there from Stephen A. Smith, but mostly it's Stephen A. Smith's post, his late-night show that's just him. Like, the McAfee show is... What is going to help ESPN? And there's somebody who just doesn't like the fact that they say what they want and do what they want and get away with it. Well, guess what? It's 2024. Those is the world we live in. People want that. People want people to be real and interesting. And as far as the Aaron Rodgers thing is concerned, uh, they had to dump that because he, first of all, he's pissing people off. I did not know how much it was. Aaron Rodgers, not, he's starting to piss off conservatives at this point. Like, this guy's all off the map. They they don't like that he's brash. They don't like the, his fake New York nonsense where he's, like, pretending he likes it. And I think that's what some people are getting. And everyone thinks he's a phony now, and I think that's part of the problem. Yeah, Chip, from a perspective of, of me, and, and I'm going to bring this back to a serious question, Chip, and, and on Fridays, and I know we, we do this some, but is this not reflective a little bit of what you and I face in the political realm right now with messaging that – you're you're seeing where people are getting their talking points, where they're getting their influencers, where they're getting uh, is it, so different than where it was, say, even five to ten years ago. Yeah, I mean the the uh, uh, the example that I was going to use is you know when Donald Trump first decided he wanted to run for president, you know one of the reasons he was so maddening to a lot of people. And I remember Amy Walter from, I still remember reading Amy's uh, opinion piece, National Journal, was, you know, Republicans don't like him because he's not following the rules, right? He's kind of making his own rules up. And I, I think Pat McAfee is kind of the sports equivalent of that, right? The old, A lot of the old guard at ESPN, they're not used to succeeding that way. <clears throat> you know, they're, they're, they're not used to their programming and their talent, you know, being like a Pat McAfee, but you know, like James said, um, you know, it, it, uh, it's got a lot of eyeballs and a lot of listeners on it. And, uh, you know, it's shock value stuff. I mean, you know, I, Stephen A. Smith is, uh, um, you know, there's sometimes I want to wring his neck and he drives me crazy. And then there's other times I and mean, I really enjoy listening because he's entertaining. I mean, you know, I don't have to like what he has to say, but he sure is a lot more entertaining than a lot of talent that they have at the network. And, and, um, and, uh, the, you know, the guy's got more energy than, you know, than an energizer bunny. So yeah, I think there's some parallels that we can draw. Absolutely. Did yeah, you just, see, me, Andrew, I'm Jack. sorry, go ahead, Doug. Go ahead, guys. Well, I'm just saying, did you guys see Stephen A. Smith about Jason Whitlock or whatever his name is? Oh, yes. Right. He went bananas on him, right? That clip went viral, but he said he called him a fat this, this, that. He, he cursed at him. And I'm not saying cursing. I know people say cursing is the lowest form and blah, blah, blah. But you've been, people... You've been watching <laughs> Reacher lately, huh? <laughs> hey, I love that show. Um, but cursing is real. Cursing is what people do. It's part of how people speak. It's not uncommon, okay? Let's stop pretending it is. And they stop pretending. Barstool stop pretending that people don't talk like that. Um, yeah, sometimes does it cross a line and it's a little gratuitous? Of course it is. I mean, that's everything, right? I mean, uh, but but Stephen A. last night went, like, wailed on this man. Whether you agree with him or not. Why? People, I, I missed it. Why? Uh, Jason Whitlock. I think Jason Whitlock is just personally. I think he's. 
I think he just comes off like such a smug scum scumbag. But that's my opinion. I, I think a lot of the stuff is that he came out with an article and went after a bunch of ESPN people and they were mostly black people. And uh, I think it had something to do with that, whether whether it was or it wasn't. I, I believe that had something to do with it. And Stephen A. Smith just lost it and was like, you're coming at, you're telling people all this stuff about me. And he went bananas. Like he just last night, he just went off on him. It was it was it seemed unprompted, to be honest, but I don't know. No, it, I tell you, well, I, I I believe it's been building for a while, but I tell you, the straw that broke the camel's back was that Jason Whitlock this week accused Stephen A. Smith of not writing the book that he's about to publish. Oh, okay. I didn't catch that because they didn't show that part yeah. of the clip. All right, that's my bad. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So they they you know Jason Whitlock claims he has it on a good source that. Because evidently, and I, I or, or that he just published or is about to publish, Stephen A. Smith's about to, about to put out a book. Obviously, he wants to get a lot of people to write it or read it. But Jason Whitlock claims he has a good source that says it was uh, that it was ghost written and it's not really in Stephen A. Smith's words. Who cares? I was just yeah, going to say, who cares? <laughs> These people are yeah, delusional. I mean, I, mean, I mean, do you think Brett Bear and uh, Brian Kilmeade write every word of the books they wrote? No, they don't. Or no, uh, but I know, I know that Doug Collins wrote his book. You better believe it. It was in my bottom line. <laughs> you I know, it's my funny. basement pounding that sucker out. And I said, well, you wrote it when I read it. I said, I know Doug wrote this because this is in his language. Exactly right. Does that like, say y'all? God, barely, it? It um, it barely above literate. You know what's funny is like I tuned Jason Whitlock out years ago because he was disparaging women who were writers, and I was like, okay. But then a couple weeks ago at some event, I think it's called Ampfest, he basically said that women shouldn't vote, and all I could think to myself was like, I know you're at a, you think you're at a convention that might, that might be a safe space, champ, but uh, I don't think there's that. He's like, remember before suffrage, and I was like, no, 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 you don't get to go there. You lose all credibility by going there. Um, remember when it was a family vote? Okay, we get it. You don't like women. That's fine. Um, but yeah, th that part of it made me laugh. But then I, but that's what I'm saying. Last night, that clip went viral because Stephen A went bananas on the guy. And that's what you get when you get Pat McAfee show. And ESPN needs that. They're losing to everyone. The only thing they have are sporting events at this point. <laughs> okay. Wild card weekend. We've touched on coaches. We've touched on mm -hmm. a lot of things. We've uh -oh. touched on the absolute debacle of Philadelphia, Miami, <laughs> in the last little bit. They have been terrible. Um, and going, but let's 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 break down the games. We'll talk about them in a minute. We'll give a prediction and we'll move. Okay. Let's start off with the first one. It will be on Saturday afternoon. Browns Texans. Uh, the story of the kid and the old man. What do you think? I, I'm taking the kid. I mean, uh, you know, I'm an old man. I'm taking the kid. I'm bet putting my money on C.J. Stroud and the uh, um, and the fairy tale season, which is Joe Flacco. I think comes to an end on Saturday, but I think it's going to be a close game. Uh, the the line on that one is uh, Cleveland's favored by two and a half. So give we'll me Flacco, baby. The run ain't over yet, Chip. <laughs> It ain't over yet. I really hope this game is good, though. I'm, All good I'm rooting for CJ Stroud. I'll, I'll be rooting for CJ Stroud, too. But yeah, I think the Flacco continues. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with that. I, I've gained a ton of respect for CJ Stroud this year, just watching him play um, more than anything else. He's a you know He's got a lot of old traditional school in him. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, but I'm going to have to take uh, the Flacco experience here. Too many of Texans folks are still young, they're still getting there. Could play. I mean, look, I wouldn't surprise me. They won. They're at home. There'll be a great atmosphere there at home. Um, but uh, I'm going to have to go with the old man on this one. Chip, you're going to have to take with the young one. And then uh, the I'll stupid bowl. Next, what next, I week, next week, I'll say I told you so. <laughs> yeah, you told me so. Okay, there you go. Uh, and now we have the stupid bowl, and that is the Dolphins' cheese on Peacock. Uh, Casey's a four-and-a-half favorite. Uh, Dolphins should never have been here. Well, nope. Of course, Jacksonville should have actually been in the playoff too, but that's a whole different story. Um, <laughs> Dolphins, Chiefs, James. Oh man, it's the Chiefs. The Dolphins aren't going to be able to throw a ball in ice weather. <laughs> Do you think it will slow uh, Tyreek Hill down? 
No, no, his blood pumps in negative five degrees. <laughs> he's fine. He's been. In the, he's the only one who's going to be okay. He's played in this. I'm worried about everybody else. Yeah, well, that's right. He does go back home here, so that's an interesting, an interesting factor. Chipper. Yeah, look, I mean, I mean, the Chiefs at home with the conditions like they are. And Miami has to be thinking in the back of their heads when they come out for warm-ups and, you know, four-degree temperatures and wind chills, minus 15. They got to be going, why didn't we take care of business next, next week? Give me, give me the Chiefs in an ugly, low-scoring game. Prop bet. Swift there or not? Of course. <laughs> James? Oh yeah, put your money on Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah, she put was. Hey, look, remember, she wasn't there this weekend. She was at Golden Globe, so she couldn't be there. She'll um, be bundled up. Oh, she was busy getting yeah, awards. <laughs> yeah, well, she was busy talking to to people. That, is, by the way, some of the best memes have come out of Taylor Swift and uh, a lot uh, Ariana Grande talking to each other. There's been some oh, of the yeah. best memes come out of that. That uh, uh, that was a tough Golden Globes. Joe Coy, I feel bad for he, him, man. He's oh my. Okay, uh, he had it's, ten it's days to prepare for that show, man. Chip, that was. Did you, did you see the first part of it? What's that? The Golden Globes. I did not. Okay, Oof. I stayed. It was after a football game, so I stayed for five minutes. I said, let me hear the monologue, because sometimes they're good. I wanted to get into the TV and pull him off the stage. I was, I mean, I was, I felt so bad for him. It was so And that, he's bad. funnier than that. I've seen him. He's not – he's funnier than that. People know him better than that, too, that said, like, this was, like, an unfair – like, I don't know how they did this to him. Those oh, are some of the – the Taylor Swift joke went off so poorly, I wanted to, like – it was like watching an episode of uh, of the worst – all the worst hard parts of The Office over and over again. I mean, it was terrible. But, Chip, it, is, it, it was mind-numbingly bad. I saw I the mean, clip of the, of the Swift joke, and it wasn't all that yeah. funny and – when yeah. you're having to tell the audience, hey, I got hired two weeks ago. I didn't write all of this. <laughs> There's yeah. a problem. Okay? Yeah, that was tough, man. That was tough to watch. All right, yeah. moving into Sunday. Uh, the 1 o'clock game, Steelers-Bills. Bills are minus – they're giving 10. Bills are up by 10 in this. Are, by, are we taking the game or the, or, or the no, spread? I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just letting it be out there. Straight up that, pick, money line pick. You know what? Give me, give me Josh Allen. He's rolling, baby. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking the Bills. I mean, whether they cover or not, it's probably a coin flip. But, look, you know, Mason, Ru- Mason Rudolph's done is great over the last three weeks. You know, it makes you wonder why Kenny Pickett started so many games. But I got the Bills in this one. Yeah, we're all three here on this one, uh, all three with the Bills. Uh, then the uh, throwback game, uh, 430 game on Fox, Packers-Cowboys. Chip. Uh, the Cowboys win this game. Very close game. Very, Very close game. But the Cowboys squeak it out and they advance. But there will be some nervous people. Very so nervous. Cowboys by 50. So Cowboys by 50. Cowboys by 50. Chip, so you'll take the seven and a half on Green Bay, correct? I'll take, I'll take the seven and a half. Dallas uh, wins, but they don't cover. Painful for me to say Cowboys um, on that one. Uh, the here and then the fun feel good game, the eight o'clock game, NBC Rams lines at Detroit first home game, first playoff game, all these other things, Stafford coming back, Goff's quarterbacking. James, I'll let you go first. It pains me to say this because I really dislike Dan Campbell so much in every way <laughs> known to man. Now that he's enemy number one, um. But yeah, they're going to beat the Rams. I think the Rams' luck is—I don't want to call it luck, but like they've had some—they've had a pretty schedule where they could win some games, and they did. Um, they almost <laughs> lost to the Giants, for God's sakes. Um, yeah, I think Detroit's going to win. They're going to win by at least a touchdown. All right. Yeah, Detroit uh, covers. Yeah. They finally figured out the right rotation with David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. It takes the load off of what Jared Goff has to do. Give me the Lions. I'm taking the Lions, and I'll give away the three points. Yeah, I'll take the Lions as well. And although I think it could be very close, I think this is this is one that I think sometimes you just have to go with the the mojo factor and Stafford walking back into that place. I. I'd love to see a shootout, wouldn't you? Yeah. Like, this feels like it could be one of those. Yeah. Could be and it'll be one touchdown. Um, well, especially when you got Laporta's down, 
for the Lions. And, right, 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 yeah, right, right. Really He's been – wow. Talk about one of the best rookie tight ends of all time. Yeah. Uh, That's... And, and then the really, frankly, Monday night, who cares? I mean, because it's, it's you know, from the AFC, NFC South, the 9 and 18. Ooh, give me the Bucks. <laughs> and um, got Bucks, Eagles, and it's at Tampa Bay. I love the Bucks here. I don't know why. I know that the Eagles have been struggling, and that's part of it. But, like, I don't know. Baker Mayfield to Mike Evans has been a godsend. Yeah, look, I mean, this game to me is a coin flip. I mean, you know, the Eagles should you know, they should win, but it's, it's really baffling what's happened to the Eagles down the road. And so, you know, I, I mean, this is a coin flip for me, and depending on whether it's heads or tails, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if either thing happened. But I will say this. If the Buccaneers beat the Eagles, look for look for there to be another head coaching opening in the NFL. I think Philly fans are ready to move on from Nick Sirianni, which is remarkable considering where they were six, seven weeks ago. Belichick to the Eagles? Is that what Chip just said? No, I didn't <laughs> say that. I didn't say that. But that would be a very logical landing spot because um, yeah. not a rebuild. That's not a rebuild. Correct. Yeah. I, I, well, it's going to be interesting there because, I mean, this thing last year at this time, a little about three weeks from now, I was flying on a plane from Atlanta to Portland, Oregon, and watching Kansas City and Philadelphia in the Super Bowl. So um, that just shows you where we've where that this whole season has fallen. A lot of good games there, a lot of stuff to, to talk about for next week as we go forward. Uh, we we'll may see some coaching. By the next time we gather for Friday's finest, we may see some coaches' vacancies filled. Um, I think some of these will be filled fairly quickly. Um, It'll be interesting to see. I don't think the Alabama job will be filled fairly quickly, um, but uh, who knows? We'll see how it all works out. Um, One last political note for Chip before we go. Scale of 1 to 10, not that he would be replaced, okay, because I don't think Hakeem would let another vacate the chair go through. I think Hakeem would step in even if he knows it's detrimental to the speaker anyway. But I don't think they – because he wasted six weeks of life in the fall with a with no speaker. Um, one to ten, ten, one, ten being gone, one being no problem at all. Where do you put uh, – right now, where do you put the climate for Speaker Johnson? Oh, wow. Uh, probably a three. And the reason I say three is because – You know, what Mike Johnson enjoys that Kevin McCarthy didn't enjoy is he is, and I look, I like Kevin McCarthy. I don't know Mike Johnson. He seems like a nice guy, but seems like Mike Johnson is liked and trusted by more of the caucus. And so maybe, you know, he can get away with more. And so I I think it's probably closer to one than 10, although it's been a long week with the budget deal with, uh, with Chuck Schumer. And so, um, you know, but I ultimately Doug, and I think, you know, I think you've said it too. I, I think Republicans problem right now is math. We don't have as big enough margin as we need. And, you know, and that's, and that's, that's a, that's a big problem, but I, I think, you know, uh, I think it's probably around three, which is, you know, higher than it was last week, but, you know, lower, a lot lower than it was when, you know, when the uh, temperature was hot for, for the previous speaker. Yeah, I don't think they're going to get rid of it. I just don't think they can afford to. But I also I think that the next three weeks determine if the Republicans keep the House. I do not. I would almost think that it would be very difficult for Speaker Johnson to be Speaker Johnson next year. I just I, it I would, think that's just, accurate. That's yeah, probably if, a, a if more they keep accurate. It. And I also don't see him being – and if, God forbid, it happened, they go to the minority, I don't see him as minority leader. Um, uh, I think – you know some of the, I mean, there's been some harsh rhetoric this week, especially with the budget deal and everything else. And there's – I mean, there's so much things not just talking about it as well that you got to look at from the not only the budget deal, but also FISA. I mean, you got Ag Bill. you got so many other things out there on the, on the plate. Uh, but we'll all get into it uh, as we go. Had to get that last little bit in there. It's been a great uh, Friday's Finest. We also got uh, Chan Gailey on here today. So you got plenty of stuff to go on your day, on your weekend. We'll see you Monday. Matt Whitaker is with us for talking about the Iowa caucuses and a lot more coming up with you. And I will see you folks, as I reminded, uh, you'll see. I'll see you next week on Fox. We'll see you next week here on the Doug Collins Podcast. Take care.